Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at a few different ways that you can change the pitch of audio. So this is one of those videos where you may know one of them, uh, you may know two, you possibly may know all three and if you do, uh, well done. But not everybody does know these and this is one of the things I realised when I used to teach in classrooms is you would think everyone in the room would know everything. It turns out almost always everybody doesn't know one of these things. Not this specifically, just stuff in general. Anyway, I'm babbling, so let's get on with it. So first things first, we're just going to look at how you can change the static pitch of a piece of audio really quickly. So here we've just got a sample, which is from Media Bay, Synthwave Sound. Okay, so first things first, if you want to just change the static pitch of it, so a bit like applying pitch bend, this came from a question from a viewer. So. If you just highlight it, you can change transpose and fine tune here. So let's say this, this is a D. So if we want to change it to an E, we can just transpose it up to. And obviously we can go further. And depending on what happens, uh, how far you go and the sample, etc., it can sound more or less convincing as you go. And you can also do fine tune. So this is sense so a hundredth of a semitone so if we go 75 sorry it'll only go 50 each way so we can do and we can do minus 50 minus 49 sorry and then if you want to go below that then you'd go minus one and plus 50 etc which will sound almost no different etc and so on so you've got some some tuning ability there but that's static it's not particularly interesting and it's not playable so there are two ways uh, i can think of to make something playable so we'll look at the slightly weird one first and then the more straightforward one in a minute here on this track here so i'm just going to mute that one so that's just transposing it uh pitch bend audio here what we're going to do is we're going to put on the pitch correct plugin okay so this is normally what's used to make you sound uh like well insert cultural reference here share t-pain whoever's doing it now etc so this would normally tune things to chromatic depending on uh, what settings you apply here etc but it doesn't have to be done internally here so what you can do is you can actually change it to external midi note and if you do that, initially you won't see any change. So if you play it, it will just do whatever it's going to do. But if you send it some MIDI data, it will change. So that's why we've got a MIDI track here. So just to take you through this from the beginning. So what we'll do is we'll add a MIDI track. Okay, call it what you want. I'm just going to call it MIDI control. And importantly, we need to send this to this pitch bend effect. So you pick the output, which is here in the inspector, and change it to pitch bend, whatever you've called the track, etc. but the pitch correct part of that. Now, the key here is to make sure that this is either on monitor or it's on record enable so that the information you put into this ends up going to this effect here. So if I play a key on my keyboard now, you can see as I play a C, the C appears, D, etc. this, that, and the other. So if I play this back now, we can see playing the keyboard isn't actually doing anything worthwhile. But if I play with the pitch bend control, you can hear that is having an effect. So if you just literally want to do pitch bend, which was what the actual request was, then this will allow you to do it dynamically. And indeed, if you record this data, so if I go back to the beginning and then just record this MIDI data and then play that back, you can see that pitch bend information in there. If we open that up, let's just have a look there. So you can see the pitch bend and then... And you can edit that, play around with it, etc. So that's probably a slightly, uh, slightly unusual use of the pitch correct plugin, but it works and it means you can play it in real time, etc. So there's a bit of fun there. 
Now, probably the most sensible way to do this and the way which I'd probably recommend for most of the time is actually to use the sampler track. So let's just add a sampler track here and we'll call it Pitch Bend Sample. Now, the sampler track is its one of those things where I think it's a bit of a lost opportunity, really, because it's, I wish really they just provided a good general purpose sampler rather than sampler track because the sampler track has some limitations. But one of the things it does do is it's standard across all versions of Cubase since the sampler track was introduced, which I think was in Cubase 9. I'll prepare to be corrected at this point. Now, if we drag this in, so this is another thing, you need to drag a sample in or pick it here, but I'm just going to drag that same sample in, so just drag it onto here. So now we've got this, this is now playable. So I'll make sure that's muted so you know that's not doing anything and this isn't doing anything. So this pitch bend sample, if I play it an octave down, so I'll just change my keyboard, there's the original pitch and now we have it fully playable and as you'd imagine, the pitch bend does what you would expect. Exactly what you'd expect. Now the upside of that is you can edit it easily here. So we can make it go further. So back in the day, I used to be a real fan of uh, 12 semitones of pitch bend because you could do all sorts of interesting slide malarkey, but it's a bit glitchy because certainly on this controller, we don't get much resolution because it's just a little MPK. So you can hear the steps in there. That doesn't sound very good, but at least you've got control over this. So you can pick it, whatever you want. And in exactly the same way as before, all of that can be recorded in MIDI. The upside of this of course is that you can control the sample play it etc play that back and change the pitch as well the downside of it is it doesn't work in the same way as what we saw earlier on here so when you were doing this with uh, let's say a longer piece of audio the use of the pitch correct here would actually work a bit better because you could change long-term pitch etc as it's playing back so it can play a longer sample and you can play that and play around with the pitch bend of it. Whereas here, you are just playing a sample. So you, obviously you can have a great big long sample, but it's much harder to get to a certain part of it. Whereas using a audio track and adding the pitch correct in there, you can play in a particular part of the sample, etc. So it can be horses for courses. It depends on the kind of thing you're doing, but probably for most situations, I'd say just use a sampler track, whack your sample in, and then have at it with the pitch bend and playing it on the keyboard. But sometimes there'll be times when maybe applying that effect will be the way to go. Anyway, hopefully you didn't know all of those. If you did, uh, well done, top of the class for you. And as ever, hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please like, subscribe, chat, etc. And we will see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.